All right, good evening. Uh, meteorologist John Hickey with you here. It is your Wednesday, and we were on the cusp of a uh, two-day storm system that's moving in. It's going to bring a wide variety of wintry weather to northeastern and central Pennsylvania. Some snow, some sleet, and even just some plain old rain, especially across some of our eastern valleys where warm air will be moving in uh, off the Atlantic and causing that changeover. But no doubt this will be a uh, widespread, impactful system. Our first probably widespread, impactful system of the season. You know, we've had a couple of kind of minor events so far this year produced anywhere from one to four inches of snow. We had that one in uh, November. We had the other one this past weekend. And of course, now uh, a more sizable system on the way here uh, to round out this work week. So let's show you some maps here, give you an update on what we're looking at. So big area of low pressure over the Dakotas. That's been responsible for blizzard conditions up in that neck of the woods. Further down to the south, there's been a line of severe storms that extended from uh, Louisiana through Mississippi and Alabama. Eight confirmed tornadoes today and unfortunately even some injuries as a result of those. And it's that southern part of the system that's going to become our snowy uh, system uh, for tomorrow as well as into the day Friday. So it's that secondary low, as we call it, that's going to become the boss and uh, give us our impactful wintry weather. I just wanted to show you this. This is what it looks like in the water vapor satellite imagery loop. A lot of very uh, moisture laden air coming up through the Gulf. And uh, this is the moisture laden air that's trending north. And that's what's going to give us our impactful weather. We saw this earlier today, the winter weather advisories that were issued from the National Weather Service, as well as those winter storm warnings, just kind of uh, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, putting the official on the system that's coming in. So it's coming. It's not going to miss. And uh, we are going to get snowy, sleety, and yes, even a little rainy around here. This is what we're talking about for snowfall totals. Now, it should be noted that we may have to measure this in two parts, especially in eastern areas, because we'll find that initial thump of snow that's going to come through. And then we'll find the mix, and that's going to compact things down, even some plain old rain in some of our valleys. And then to wrap things up on Friday, we'll get some additional minor snow accumulation on top. So again, part of a two-part uh, system uh, in terms of trying to measure that snow in eastern areas. Now, further north and west, get through northern Lycoming County, northern Clinton County, uh, Sullivan uh, County, up through the Endless Mountains, north central Pennsylvania, Gr uh, Pennsylvania Grand Canyon, a solid 5 to 10 inches of snow and likely to be all snow up there. No need to uh, try to measure twice or what's the expression, measure twice, cut once? Yeah, no need for that. But, you know, for a lot of our valley cities, you know, we may get an initial thump of snow over to sleet that's really going to compact things down, even some plain old rain. Uh, the only kind of part of our map that we're kind of looking at is uh, portions of, uh, well, southern Clinton and uh, western uh, Union and Snyder counties. You may push five inches of snow, could be some six, seven inch totals out there, but for the most part, uh, I think this is a, a pretty reasonable place to start. So this is what it looks like on the big picture. That big area of low pressure uh, that we talked about bringing blizzard conditions to portions of the Dakotas. And then this southern uh, part of the system that's going to be moving through Virginia over the Chesapeake Bay and eventually over southern New Jersey. And uh, with that, uh, that's the system that becomes the boss. That's what's going to create uh, that kind of wintry mix scenario over eastern Pennsylvania on tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. But again, those uh, north central mountains likely to stay all snow. And uh, that's why we think there'll be some higher totals out there. Let's zoom in and give you kind of a step-by-step -step of what to expect uh, for tomorrow and then into the day Friday. So it's going to begin somewhere around 6 to 8 o'clock in the morning out in central Pennsylvania as an initial light mix of snow and sleet. That's going to progress northward. So I'm thinking by noon, I think all of us are seeing some form of precipitation. I think this particular model that's showing a lot of mix throughout a lot of our valley cities at 1 o'clock in the afternoon could be a little bit overdone with that. I think we'll find a several hour period uh, tomorrow afternoon, early parts of the evening, where this will be all snow for just about all of us. And if I were to pick a commute that I think will be the most impacted from this, I think it's going to be that Thursday evening commute. In fact, I'm going to show you a map here in just a moment that kind of breaks down uh, the Thursday morning, evening, Friday morning, evening commutes. And I've highlighted that the Thursday evening commute probably will see some relatively high impacts from this as this will be the snowiest part to the system, maybe just getting into that transition of sleep. Still some lingering impacts for the Friday morning commute. And then as the system is wrapping up for Friday evening, that's why I think there'll be some lesser impacts then. But let's advance the map. 
and I want to show you what's going on. This is 4 o'clock now, and uh, you can see, again, that is a pretty good thump of snow, maybe outside of the valleys, uh, which could be looking at perhaps a little bit of a mix. We'll see how that plays out. But I'm banking on that southern system coming in for Thursday evening, driving in some warmer air, and that's what's going to start to create that transition. So I think this is probably a good place to look at things. Valley City's 10 o'clock looking at a mix. You can see a lot of the central Susquehanna Valley looking at a mix, but still some pretty steady snows, especially through the uh, central northern Poconos as well as up to the northern tier in Endless Mountains. Looks like you're still snowing at this time. This model that we're using, okay, it might be a little bit aggressive showing this much mix this early in the game. It's not out of the realm of possibility, but it could be just a little bit aggressive. Just want to note that. Still could be looking at a pretty solid snow scenario, especially up through the northern tier. But Valley Cities, uh, down through the cold region, 2 o'clock Friday morning, sure. Uh, could be looking at just a real cold rain at that point. Now, the system is going to start to move further away from us starting on Friday morning. And what that means is it's going to start to pull in some colder air. And with that colder air, it's likely that we're going to transition back to snow for just about everybody. But also should be noted that temperatures, especially in the valleys Friday morning, will be in the mid-30s. So probably not much additional snow accumulation on the roadways. But the grassy surfaces, well, <laughs> no longer grassy surfaces after that snow sleet combo kind of creates a bit of a glacier out there. So the snow will be stacking up on top of that in the valleys. But on mountain roads Friday morning, some additional snow accumulation could make things a little bit messy. Now for Friday afternoon, the system is, system is winding down, and that's why I don't think we'll find much, if any, kind of real significant significant impact for that Friday uh, evening commute. Here's that commute graphic that I was referencing. So breaking it down commute by commute, because things are just starting in central Pennsylvania for Thursday morning, I don't think we're looking at too much of an impact. It looks really light precipitation then, shouldn't create much of an issue. But for the Thursday evening commute, most of us looking at snow at this point. And I think Thursday evening or Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening is probably the steadiest and heaviest precipitation, we'll just call it that. I think it's falling at this time, and that's why I've highlighted the Thursday evening commute with a high impact rating. Looks like it'll be a medium impact for Friday morning, particularly across mountain roads where you're likely still looking at some, some decent snow at this point. Uh, if, if not, you're looking at a mix, but you know things are, are really getting compact. You know, crews will have been out all night, but still plenty of slippery areas and you're leaving yourself plenty of extra time to get to where you need to be. Now, Friday uh, evening commute, calling for low impacts at that time. Things are winding down, uh, temperatures are warming up, and it looks like uh, things should be in pretty good shape by then. Uh, this is just a kind of a different way to kind of surmise uh, what we're looking at in terms of a, a storm system. Uh, this is kind of a newer style graphic that's actually uh, put together from the Weather Prediction Center. And what it does is it kind of just takes in a lot of factors, things like how much snow, uh, the area that that snow is falling in, you know, of course, a lot of our real rural communities, you're used to it, right? You can get a big old snowstorm and, and, and things are relatively uh, in pretty good shape. You're used to it. You're used to the, you know, the equipment's ready to go. Whereas in our valleys, yeah, we've got the equipment, but it's a lot more impactful if places like, let's say, Scranton or Wilkes-Barre were to get, and we don't expect this this go around, but just as a for instance, uh, if we were looking in our valley cities at, you know, a foot of snow or something, that would certainly fall within the high impact rating on the scale. But, you know, you get a foot of snow up in some of our mountains, mountains, yeah, you can handle it, you're used to it, and that's why the impact rating is a little bit lower. But it also takes into account things like snowfall rates, uh, the weight of the snow, if there's going to be wind and, and heavy wet snow issues creating power outages. So this map tried to combine all of that into a kind of easy to understand format. And what you see is that much of the area is looking at a minor level event. Even though this is going to take place over two days, most of us will be able to handle this no problem. You do see some oranges in there though, particularly across some of the mountains. And and this is where we expect higher snowfalls, uh, as well as that heavy, wet, dense snow and some wind. We could find some wind gusts in the higher elevations, probably pushing 35 miles an hour. And that may lead to some pockets of power outages. So that's why there are some pockets of moderate level 3 out of 5 on the scale. But you notice, most of us, this is going to be a relatively minor event. I did mention that the hilltops are looking at some pretty strong wind gusts. This is a look at those gusts. Looks like it's going to ramp up in the afternoon. So it's not real windy tomorrow morning, but the evening is when that's, uh, that low pressure system, that uh, southern storm that's going to take over, become the boss, uh, that's when it's going to ramp up a little bit, and that's when we expect to find some of the strongest winds. We could find some wind gusts Thursday evening into the wee hours of Friday morning up to about 35 miles per hour. Notice the direction, too, with those little arrows. They're all pointing from west to east, so this is going to be an easterly wind. 
and uh, easterly winds combined with a heavy wet snow could lead to some uh, trees down and uh, some possible power outages. This map tries to show you where some of those power outages you know, may take place. I wouldn't take it as gospel, but some isolated power outages through the Poconos, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some of that up through the northern tier as well as the, as well as the mountains up through uh, northern Lycoming and as well as the mountains in Sullivan County too. But again, this is just kind of a for instance, if you will. So a quick recap of those snowfall projections. A lot of our valley locales looking at a general two to five inches, particularly the uh, Wyoming Valley, but I was mentioning off the top of this live update that we're doing that out in uh, western, especially western portions of Union and Snyder counties, you may push that five inches of snow. Could be a little bit more like six or seven if that colder air wraps back in and any kind of mix that you see goes back over to a, a pure snowfall. We do expect some mixing in the Poconos, but it's going to take longer for that mixing in the Poconos to take place, as well as portions of the coal region too. So that's why we think places like Lake Harmony could very well come away with four to eight inches of snow down through Hazelton, uh, McAdoo, uh, as just a couple of for instances that could be pushing, you know, those four to eight inch amounts. But you start coming down 476, uh, you're coming down 81 into the Valley Cities, and you're looking at those lower totals. And again, the same could be said for some of the mountainous areas out through central Pennsylvania too. You go up to the mountains, you're talking about five to 10 inches of snow, and probably very little mixing. Meanwhile, down and throughout a lot of our valleys through uh, Beavertown, Beaver Springs, uh, Lewisburg, Sealands Grove, uh, into Danville, Bloomsburg, just to, again, just naming a few communities, of course, there's so many. Uh, you're more likely to find some mixing, you're in valleys, and it's likely that your totals will be held down a little bit. So this is just kind of a rundown of what we're looking at right now. Of course, we're going to always keep you updated on air and online with these latest updates. Uh, we've got another style of these updates coming your way for tomorrow morning, and of course, a bunch of newscasts, too. Uh, we've got WNEP 2 uh, carrying our 10 o'clock newscast, WNEP with the 11 o'clock newscast tonight. Joe Snedeker in tomorrow morning from 4.30 to uh, 7 o'clock with all sorts of updates as well as those cut-ins on ABC from 7 to 9. He'll probably be doing one of these updates. Kurt's in tomorrow. He'll be doing lots of updates. We've got you covered every step of the way. We've also got some articles up on our website, WNEP.com. You're also going to find those on our app, too, and that's going to keep you updated, too. So lots of ways to keep updated with this storm system. Uh, you're always up to date as long as you have that WNEP app downloaded, ready to go. Not only do you get all these updates and text alerts, but you can also take a look at the radar and future radar uh, right from wherever you are. Thank you very much for checking out this live update. We'll be seeing you on TV and of course, as we mentioned, plenty of updates here on the web as well. Take care. Have a safe Wednesday night.